Hey guys, today I'm over near Bendigo to check out a very interesting electrostatic dry blowing plant, which has been used to process the tailings of old deep lead workings. This plant can process up to 60 tonne an hour, and in case you're interested, it's currently up for sale. In this video, we're gonna hear all about the plant, how this technology works, and a bit about the site's very rich history. Yeah, welcome Michelle. Uh, today we're offering uh, an electrostatic plant for sale and uh, the man that's had tenure on the mining lease here is no other than uh, Tim Sales and Tim's going to explain the process and all that for us. Thank you Michelle. All right. Yeah, well, this is a, uh, a static setup. It uses uh, static electricity to recover the gold. A chap from the States designed it. He was a photocopier technician. So it works on the same principle. It uses triboelectrification, so when the particles rub together, the gold takes on a negative charge and the other minerals and that in the wash don't take it on. And therefore, when this filter remains neutrally charged, the uh, negatively charged gold overcomes the air blowing through it, which fluidizes the whole lot running down, and the gold sticks to the filter. The process is, in the 20 foot container, we've got a, a screen that we, we knock off, we scalp everything over 10 mil off, and uh, it's conveyed up into above the 20 foot container, which then runs down a hopper into an auger, and that auger feeds um, the sand into a mixing chamber. And behind the mixing chamber, there's a um, 150 kilowatt Cummins driving a 7,500 CFM positive roots blower. It is ducted down a, a big cone into two pipes, about 200 mil, and they, they run off into the mixing chamber and come in at, at an angle, and it creates a horizontal cyclone with that air. I'm only running the blower at about half half tilt so it's around 3,250 cubic foot a minute yeah so that horizontal cycling then you feed the uh, sand into that and when that gets spun up it's funneled down and because of the, the taper on the cone that it, it's fed into that's uh, using Bernoulli's theorem as the gas accelerates the pressure drops and the sand gets spun up and moves to the outside and traps air on the outside of it, which creates like an air bearing. And then it's uh, shot out up this polyethylene pipe into the cyclone, which then reverses the, the cyclone, then separates the air from the material that we want to treat. And they fall into a screen. And the screen on the top was 2.4 mil. So, and they, they were tilted at, at an angle like, like such, so that the Plus 2.4 runs down to this end and everything minus 2.4 drops through to the bottom screen. The bottom screen is 100 micron. Mm. So then the material between 2.4 and 100 micron run to the other end and uh, everything minus 100 micron falls through and was treated in the center. Mm. So then um, the problem with it is, it is it's not, it's like a sluice. It's not a continual process. So you have to stop do a clean out and start it back up again. So, um, yeah. So the material itself, Tim, has to be extremely dry. dry. And the uh, humidity in the humidity, air affects that? Yeah, absolutely. So when it's high humidity, because it builds up a charge as it's going, all the particles rubbing together. And uh, yeah, if there's a lot of moisture in the air, it, um, yeah, it loses that charge. So uh, rainy days are out and the material has to be dry, dry as a chip, so that it yeah. flows evenly. And grading as well, it all has to be graded. So you set the equipment up for the size that you're treating, and uh, which yeah, optimizes the recovery of it. We've sized particles down to uh, 15 micron, but the recovery rate at that size is minuscule, but everything above 40 to 50 micron, it's uh, it's up there in the, in the 90%, and then above, 
like 60 to 70 micron it's in the 98 to 99 and um, process loves the flat big surface area gold whereas if you're sluicing the gold wants to float if it's flat and um, yeah with this the surface area it just loves it sticks like yeah I won't go into that what it sticks like but yeah pretty damn good but um, yeah, I've had some success with it. A lot of people are a bit skeptical, but mm. hey, it's good for me because. So how well, many how many tonne an hour would this plant process? This one, this little one, or the the, the big one? Yeah, that's designed to do about sixty tonne an hour. Sixty tonne an hour. And we had yeah. A, yeah, very close to that running through it. Mm. A little bit of the history of these tailings dumps around the area. Yep. Most of the the wash that came from the deep bleed here. Yep. Was that the old Compaspe River? Yeah, the old the old Compaspe deep bleed. So right. Historically, like millions of years ago, that would have been the previous Compaspe River until you know yep. the fault changes and things, and it's been rerouted. But uh, from what I understand, the Compaspe deep bleed that came from the west that run across here. It's probably all the stuff shedded from the early Bendigo stuff millions of years ago. and yeah, yeah. Although we're a long way away from it. Yeah, we're about, um, I think it's about six kilometres, seven kilometres from the actual uh, reefs of Bendigo. Yeah. So uh, the Bendigo Creek's only maybe a kilometre yep. yeah, to the west of here. So there's been a lot of weathering here. A lot of weathering, yeah. Yep. I don't know the absolute recovery of what the old fellas got, but it was very rich. And there's about 10 metres of beach-like sand. Um, and that's that gave them a lot of grief, apart from the water, of course, mm. um, the groundwater at the time. But they sunk a, uh, a wooden shaft down through the beach sand, through the lead, down into the bedrock below, then ran a drive directly underneath the old lead and then stoped it from there. Yep. Pulled the ore out and, and uh, hauled it to the surface and treated it through a stamping battery. And those tailings, uh, that's the end result. They're remnants of a, going through an old stamp battery. Stamp battery, yeah. And then they were cyanided. And from what I understand, they weren't touched again after that. Whereas most of the heaps in the early 1900s were cyanided four or five times by cyanide and teams around the Bendigo gold fields. And uh, yeah, they didn't really bother coming back out here. So, so we, uh, yeah, we had a crack 13, 14 years ago. Mm. It's not overly rich, but the process is low cost. You're running a bit of diesel. Yeah. We only have an old front end loader out here feeding it. So um, yeah, pretty damn good. <laughs>